Good morning YouTube, this is Johnny. I thought I'd make a video. I'm sitting here uh, having my uh, morning devotions going into the afternoon hours here on March the 13th, 2021. It is going at 11.51 late morning. And yeah, I, I thought I'd make a video tonight. But I might just make videos anytime I feel like it while my wife has gone out to Denver, Colorado visiting our daughter Beth and Andy, her husband, and our four grandchildren. Little Nora is now four months old. Nora Jean. And writing in my diary as usual, I'm on page 270 right now. And I have been reading for morning worship. Uh, Looking Unto Jesus by Isaac Ambrose. When I was, uh, a couple of weeks ago, when I was out and we visit Re Christian Reformation book service, I, I noticed that they had, um, this was published by Sprinkles Publications. And I noticed when we were at uh, Reformation Heritage Books that they had a whole section of Sprinkle Publications and what they did is that they bought out all their their stock and I mentioned that to one of the fellows who worked there and he said he asked me what is your favorite Sprinkle publication and I said, Looking Unto Jesus by Isaac Ambrose. And he said, it's out of print. It's not available anymore. And I said, oh, I, I was surprised because uh, I thought that they had reprinted it themselves. And he said, no, it's not available. Well, I told him that there is, uh, the strict Baptists have their own book distribute it, they distribute, they have like a bookstore in Montana called uh, Gospel Missions. And they, and I said, I was recently there and they had this edition for sale still in stock. So what I did this morning, I finally went around and bought myself a second copy of, of my, one of my favorite all time Christian classics, Looking Into Jesus. So I've been reading this as I've been going through the uh, the life of Jesus Christ by Rudolf or Lunaf of Saxony, and now Isaac Ambrose does not look at every single scene or uh, in the four Gospels, whereas. He does. This is just the first volume of a four-volume set. This goes up to the Sermon on the Mount. And what I looked at this morning is that Isaac Ambrose was going through some of the miracles recorded in the Gospels. So I was reading that this morning for devotions. And I also got out to read some Reformed Dogmatics today. Uh, this is volume three, Sin, Salvation in Christ by Herman Bavick. And I still got out my Reformation commentary. As I mentioned, volume, the second volume of this two volume commentary is coming out in the spring. I pre ordered it. I, I buy all the Reformation commentary on scriptures. Uh, I really, they're really great for devotions and just when you're reading through the Bible. Now, last night, I was um, talking about regeneration as we were going, as we were looking at the Gospel of John on um, the new birth, and we read from is it chapter three. I think we read from chapter three. Yeah, the new birth, where it, uh, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. And then we looked at verse five of chapter three, Jesus answered, Moses, surely I say unto you, unless one is born of the water 
and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. See, from the biblical perspective, either you're in the kingdom of the sun or you're in the kingdom of darkness. And the only way that you can enter into the kingdom of God is that you have to undergo a new birth. For it says here, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say unto you that you must be born again. Everybody in the world who wants to enter the kingdom of God, to be saved, to to go into the eternal state and with Christ and the new creation, they must be born again. You must undergo a spiritual rebirth regeneration, conversion, repentance, and faith. And as I was thinking about that, I remembered I was laying in bed. I went to bed around 11 o'clock, and I remembered many years ago when I was out in California, almost 43, back in the 80s. I Well, no, not back in the 80s. <laughs> well, yeah, back when I... I don't know. Now, I'm not sure, but I know back in California that I read the works of Stephen Sharnock. And I think I, I mentioned to you in past videos that when I was in California, I when I became a Calvinist, I joined the Orthodox Presbyterian Church, Covenant OPC in Berkeley, California. And I told you that in their church library, somebody had bought every Sovereign Grace Puritan reprint. It was a big, huge wall of at least 40, 50, 60 volumes. And it was all the Puritan reprints. And what I would do is I would borrow them from the library and I would take them when I was working at the, Hall, not, uh, the Richmond Rescue Mission. And I was a, I was on staff there for, I don't know, two or three, three years. And that's around about the 1973, 74, 75, something around that time. Maybe 75. And I would read him, and I was reading Stephen Charnock. And one of the, and then one of the things I read by Stephen Charnock was his book, his treatise on regeneration. And the Band of Truth Trust came out with the, the works of Stephen Charnock back in 1986. Now I think that when this came out I was in seminary. I think. I need my timeline. I forgot to bring my timeline with me. But anyway, I bought these works of Stephen Charnock. This is volume four, volume three. And then you have volume five. But the first volumes I already had, I bought when I was in Bible college. I didn't buy these. An elder gave these to me. The first two volumes is a two volume on the, the existence and attributes of God. And what this is, a discourse is on the existence and the attributes of God. These are the first two volumes in the works of Stephen Charnock. And he was a very famous Puritan minister, divine. I can't remember what years he lived. But I bought these. But one of the things, I had a, a selection from... Stephen Charnock on the new birth or the doctrine of regeneration in paperback. As I mentioned in past videos, that Baker Bookhouse published back in the 80s a selection from the Puritan works. I've shown you John Flavel, The Method of Grace. I've shown you other ones in that series. John Owen on... Uh, I think on the the glory of Christ. Anyway, I have still some of those down the lower level. I had this one in uh, 
but if you this is the complete on this is the complete this is the doctrine of regeneration when you look at this edition the banner of truth it goes into a discourses the necessity of regeneration a discourse on the nature of regeneration a discourse on the efficiency of regeneration a discourse on the word the instrument of regeneration a discourse on god's being the author of reconciliation a discourse on the cleansing virtue of christ's blood and the reason why, when I first read this, now I read it in the Sovereign Grace edition, the old green hardback Sovereign Grace. And to me, it blew my mind. And the reason why it blew my mind is that when I became a Christian in 1970, when God saved me, I went to a Baptist church. And I would hear from the pulpit, the minister say, you must be born again. And that was it. <laughs> They'd say, you must be born again, you know, accept Jesus into your life, come down the aisle and be baptized. But there was never, I never heard any theological uh, sermon on what the new birth was, on what, what is, what does it mean to be born again? And then you read the Puritans. The Puritans wrote massive works on regeneration, on conversion, on saving faith, on repentance. All these things that I heard when I first became a Christian from ministers, but they never explained them. They never went, they never set forth the biblical teachings on these gospel realities. They never did. And so when I read the Puritans, like, here's Stephen Charney, two massive volumes on the doctrine of God. I never heard, when I first became a Christian, when I was among the fundamentalists, among Baptists, Baptist or just, you go to a, a typical church, I never heard them talk about the divine attributes of God, the character and the being of God. I never heard anything like that until I went to the, an Orthodox Presbyterian church. And when I went to the OPC church, they would have summer Bible conferences in the Santa Cruz Mountains in California. And they would, the ministers would just preach in all these things. And not only that, but they would, there were, you could get lecture on cassettes from Mount Olive Tape Library in Mount Olive, Mississippi. And so when I heard this, the glorious gospel of Christ in the fullness, then you looked around, I looked around me and I said, hey, you know, there is something wrong with American evangelicalism. There's something wrong with the preaching. There's something wrong with the teaching. It was just so shallow. So there was no content, no meat. There was no depth. You didn't see the glory of the gospel. You didn't see the glory of the work of Christ on the cross. You didn't see the glory of salvation. And what a grand and glorious thing that is, that when God saves a sinner, how his divine majesty is displayed in his mercy and his grace and his love and his justice. You just, it was never visible or made plain. And that's why I, how I got into the Puritans. And uh, one of the thir first books I read way back then was the introduction to Puritan theology, a reader. And when I got this, there's a section in here that just blew my mind. <laughs> it, and what it, it's selections from different Puritans. You have like Natural Theology by John Preston, Scripture by John Jewell. Now John Jewell was an early English Reformation divine. And then you have Stephen Charnock on God, Thomas Matton. Now, I, I've shown you the works of Thomas Matton. 22 volumes I have downstairs. It's a reprint. It's not the original. Man in Sin, Christ uh, by James Usher. I have His Body, Divinity. Salvation by William Perkins. Now, I showed you. I have, they just reprinted the works of William Perkins. And then you have The Atonement 
by John Owen, who wrote the most famous work on the death of Christ, the death of Christ, and his, uh, his works. And then you have Samuel Hopkins on regeneration and conversion. When I read regeneration and conversion, one of the first things I was exposed to biblical teaching on what salvation conversion was, I was just, I never heard it before. And I had gone to church for five years. I had gone to Charismatic Baptist Church. I've gone to, you know, American Baptist churches. I had gone to Bible studies among Jesus people. And I never heard what the theology of salvation, the, the, the biblical theology of what conversion is. <laughs> They talked about, you must be born again. You know, you got to be born again. you got to be born again. But there was nothing, nothing about what that meant. And then you read the Puritans. On what's it, the knowledge of God? And you read the Puritans on what the new birth is and regeneration. And then you get, then you can start examining yourself. Have I been born again? Do I really know the work of divine grace? Have I been born again. And that's why I recommend Stephen Sharnock. I thought about reading from him, but it would just be too much. So if you want to know what it means to be born again, you want to know what the doctrine of regeneration is, read Stephen Sharnock. This is available. You can get it from Reformation Heritage Books. You can get his works. You want to know a solid work on the doctrine of God? Read Stephen Charnock, uh, The Existence and Attributes of God. And I was reading this, I was going to read from his, his part here on spiritual worship, which is just, it's one of my favorite sections in here, a discourse on spiritual worship. What does it mean to worship God? What's it mean to worship God? What is spiritual worship? You know, there's false worship, there's idolatry, I mean, you think about people who go to church and they don't know God. <laughs> they don't. Like I was reading this morning, I was reading one of the, the miracles, and I can't find it now. It was in the Gospel of Luke. And it was that when Jesus, he went into the synagogue, and he cast, and in the synagogue was a man possessed by a demon. And I thought to myself, that's a good thing for a sermon, that when you go to church, you might have people in your church who are possessed by demons. Just because they're in your church doesn't mean that you're indwelt by the Holy Spirit, that you have experienced regeneration, that you've been born again, that you've repented and put your faith, that you might be still a child of darkness. And that it struck me, there was a man possessed by a demon in the synagogue. <laughs> And I thought, yeah, well, the Bible does teach that within the within the kingdom of God, there's the wheat and the tares, there's the sheep and there's the goats. And that's why you need preaching in churches that separate the chaff from the wheat. You need, you need preaching that, that, that will open up men's hearts and cause them to examine themselves to see if they have been born again, that they have passed from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the beloved son, that they have undergone this radical transformation, that they are now seeking after God, not just in their heads, but with their affections, with the love of their hearts. You hear Ollie, I'm babysitting Ollie. Our son Caleb, Emily, and the girls went up for a family event, and so I'm watching their dog Ollie. That's a you all so heard barking. So I just want to do that and also read Herman Bavick on what is sin and salvation in Christ. If something really, he's really good too. So I just had these thoughts on my mind this morning and since I got, <laughs> since I have the time to share my thoughts, I thought I would. So yeah, so once again, uh, read Stephen Charnock on the new birth. Uh, read Herman Bavick on salvation in Christ. Above all, read the Bible. 
Read the Gospels. And because Jesus says, he, uh, he says there in the Gospel of John, we just read it, he says, Most I surely, Jesus answered, Most I surely I say unto you, unless one is born of the water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say unto you, you must be born again. So I hope you're having a good Saturday. This is March the 13th. My wife texted me earlier. It's snowing in Denver. And she said she'd call me later. Ollie and I are just hanging out. I hope you're having a good weekend. I'll probably make a video tonight. I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna make videos when I feel like it. You don't have to watch my videos, but hey, I gotta talk to somebody and I share my thoughts. And uh, so yeah. So until next time, bye.